welcome back. Hopefully you've had a good break and everyone's settled back into your, into your chairs, ready for tutorial part two. So just before I hand it over to Matt, I thought I'd give a bit of an explanation of what the tutorial is going to cover. So you've got a bit of an idea of where you're heading in the steps. So we're going to mimic a bit of a project. Um, remember, this is a training course, so it's, um, you know, neglect the politics around what we're doing in the training course. Um, but we're going to start with a development site which is marked out on this map. And we're gonna turn this in from kind of the rural residential to urban residential. Um, and I should mention, so one of the reasons we are going to do this in, in a rafts kind of uh, method is you can see the contours on, contours on the map there. We're gonna assume that there is no LIDAR information available for this. So it's not an option to do 2D modeling or to do direct rainfall for the hydrology. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is work out the external catchment that's draining to the top of our development site, because we're going to need to deal with those flows. Once we know the flows from the external catchment, we're going to add a channel into the model to convey the flows through our development site. Then, of course, we're going to add the flows from the development site as it is, so in the rural kind of um, condition. And we're going to add that to the outlet so that we can determine the pre-development um, site discharge. After we've done that, we're then going to update the land use from the rural to the urban residential for the development site. And we're going to assume that it's quite steep up in that external catchment. We're going to assume that, that isn't going to get developed in the future. Right, we're going to do that and then we're going to determine the increase in site discharge at the outlet. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to assume that the uh, peak flows are going to increase based on that development. And so we're going to add a basin to mitigate the post development, uh, add a basin to mitigate the post development flows. Uh, and then the last step there that Matt's going to take you through is obviously check that the, the post development flows with the mitigation um, basin is less than or equal to the pre development flows. All right, I'll hand it over to Matt to step you through how we would do this in the software. Welcome back, everyone. In this session, we're going to create a new network using template data. Then we're going to manually define subcatchment areas and set up some subcatchment data. We're going to define how the flow is routed through this network towards the development outlet. Then we're going to use the ICM ARNR storm generator to produce an ensemble of design storms. We're going to run the simulation and analyze the results for this pre-development case. We are then going to create a new scenario for the post-development and run the simulations and analyze the results. Lastly, we're going to add a basin to the network to attenuate the flows in the post-development case. Now let's get into workshop five. To begin this workshop, we're going to open up the transportable database from our training data folder. To do this, we're going to click on the open transportable icon, navigate to our training data folder and select the transportable. We're going to open that up, maximize the window, and then we're going to copy RAS tutorial part two model group and paste it into our master database. We're just going to close the transportable now. Then we're going to go to tools and template network. Here we're going to drag in the template MGA 9455 into the data field. And then we're going to hit apply and OK. Now we're going to create a new model group in the master database. So we right click on the master database, go new model group, and we're going to call this RAS tutorial two. Press OK. Next, right click on this new model group, go new InfoWorks, and we're going to create a new network. 
this network is going to be called urban development. And we need to make sure that we tick on the use template network. Hit OK. Now double click on the new network to bring it into the geo plan. You can see here that the background image could not be loaded as it may be mapped to a different file path. So we hit OK, maximize the window. And if we want to bring on that aerial image, we can just do as we did earlier by right clicking, going to GIS layer control, click on add. We navigate to our part two in our data folder, make sure that we have the raster image and select aerial two. Hit open. Check that we've got the same projection as our network. Hit apply and OK. If we want to save this as a layer list, we right click in our model group, go new InfoWorks and select layer list. We're just going to call this aerial image two. and hit OK. Lastly, let's drag on the predefined label list into the geo plan. Now we're going to look at adding subcatchments. We're going to start by importing new subcatchment data from GIS, and then we're going to manually create any missing subcatchments that drain to the development site. We go to network, import and open import the sorry open the data import center we're going to select subcatchment from the drop down make sure that we've got raw shape file as our source type and we're going to navigate to the training data folder and select urban dev subcatchments hit open then we want to map the subcatchment id to our catch id and then we're going to select storm from the drop down for default values next to system type. Hit import. We should have three new objects. Click OK and close the open data import center. We can see here that we're missing some areas that are draining towards the development site just by looking at our contours. Before we draw in the new subcatchment, we're going to add some labels to the existing subcatchments. To do this, we're going to use the custom label icon. So we right click, click on the icon, and then we just select one of our subcatchments. This will create a new icon. To edit it, we click on the label, and then we can go to free text, select our subcatchment ID, and insert the field. If we want to make it bigger, we can go to the formatting tab and just change the size. Hit apply and OK. We're going to create one here for subcatchment three. That looks like it's selected one of the contours. Make sure we're just selecting subcatchment three. Double click. We're going to make this similar to the one we just made before. Apply and OK. And we're just going to delete this one. To adjust where the labels are shown, we just make sure we're back in the selection tool and we can just hold, click and drag. OK. Now let's look at delineating the rest of this subcatchment. So what we want to do is we're going to select subcatchment from the drop down, hit the new object tool, and we're going to start drawing the subcatchment. It's a good idea to ensure that we have snapping mode on.
and double click to close. We're going to name this subcatchment C2 and we're going to make sure that we have the type set to subcatchment. Select OK. Let's create a new custom label for the subcatchment 2. Make sure we click on the subcatchment and we're going to edit the label similar to what we had for the other two. Apply and OK. We need to make sure that we press insert field. And just drag this towards the center. You may notice that the subcatchment did not snap up correctly. We're going to use tool in ICM to make sure that all snap vertices, all vertices have snapped and there are no gaps or overlaps. So holding down the control key, we're going to select all four polygons. Another way to do this would be to come into the key window right click on subcatchment and select select objects. With all the subcatchments now selected, we go to model, geometry, and then we're going to go down to close gaps and overlaps. We want to set the area to 50, click, click select and close. Then we cancel to get out of the closed gaps and overlaps windows. We should now see that C2 has been snapped to the vertices of C1. Let's open up the subcatchment properties for C2. And for the purpose of this training, we're going to set the total area to be 4.75 hectares. Lastly, in workshop five, we're going to look at entering and updating subcatchment data. In ICM, a subcatchment describes an area draining to one or more inflow nodes. Important properties of subcatchments are the land use and runoff surfaces. A land use contains a list of runoff surfaces particular to the type of land use being defined. Example of land uses could be residential, industrial, commercial, rural, etc. They also contain default values for several factors, including the percentage of total area for each runoff surface. Two typical surface types used with the RAS procedure are pervious and impervious. ICM allows the use of up to 12 runoff surfaces for each land use. This is to help support the modeling of more complex or mixed surfaces. A runoff surface describes the runoff characteristics of a specific surface type. Example of a runoff surface could be road, roof or pasture. For each surface type, individual characteristics can be defined that determine how runoff of rainfall occurs on that surface, the volume of runoff and the rate at which it enters the drainage system. Runoff surfaces include parameters like infiltration, the Manning's roughness, and the type of routing model. In this example, we're going to use rafts. We are now going to create a new land use with user-defined runoff surfaces to apply to our subcatchments. So what we're going to do is double click on subcatchment C1 to bring up the properties window. We're going to click on the down arrow next to land use ID. And we're going to go down to insert new land use object. We're going to give this new land use the name rural. Hit OK. And this should open up the land use properties window.
From the drop down menu, set the runoff surface to 1. And then use the down arrow key to open up the runoff surface 1. We're going to populate the runoff surface 1 with the following. So our surface type is going to be set to pervious. Our routing model is going to be rafts. Ground slope is going to be left as null. We're going to change our runoff volume type to DEFCON loss. We're going to enter in 15 for the maximum deficit or initial loss. And then we're going to enter in 2.5 for our continuing loss. We want to make sure that our initial type our initial loss type is absolute, our initial loss value is zero, and we're going to change our mannings to 0 0.035. Then, using the green arrow back key, we go back to our rural land use, and we're going to set our default area for runoff surface 1 as 100%. Press Enter. Now that we have set up the runoff surfaces that make up our land use, we need to apply this to the other subcatchments. We also need to set up the subcatchment slope. We're going to do this using the grid windows tools in ICM. To bring up the grid windows, we can go to window, grid windows, and select a new subcatchments window. We could also select the new subcatchments window icon from the toolbar. We're going to highlight the subcatchment ID column, right click on the header, and freeze the columns. This will mean any time we scroll through, our subcatchment ID will be locked. Another thing to note in order to change the order of data in the grid windows, we can highlight a column, right click, and we can sort the columns. I'm going to choose sort on selected columns ascending. Now we want to scroll across to land use ID and populate the rest as rule. We can quickly do this by highlighting the column, right clicking on one of the rows, current cell value, set new values for cells, and I'm going to choose rule from the drop down. Hit OK. Then we want to scroll across further to slope. Subcatchment C1 will have a slope of 0 0.4, C2 will be 0 0.4, C3 will be 0 0.2, and C4 will be 0 0.04. Finally, we want to ensure that we check on the per surface rafts B option for each subcatchment. This will tell ICM to calculate B from the parameters you provided in the runoff surfaces. So highlight the column again, and we're going to set all the values, or we'll check on for all subcatchments. Lastly, we're going to commit the changes to our master database. So right click on the network, commit changes to master database, and we're just going to add into the comments. Added land use, runoff surface, and subcatchment data. Hit OK, and for now we're going to select No for validating.